What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the only podcast on the internet where you're part of the Roto, part of the Chill Session. And today, joining us in our smoking circle is good old Roger. Hello, everyone. It is so awesome to be back here. And for you new viewers, we like to talk video games, movies, comic books, TV, and all that good stuff. We like to get nerdy on the show. But mostly, uh, this week is mostly going to cover uh, movie news and trailer-related stuff. Yeah, lots of trailers so in that's the a little past bit different. week. Yeah, another trailer apocalypse, if you will. But yeah, like you were saying, we're going to start off with some movie news. And our first piece of movie news is Tom Cruise has been casted in the new Mummy remake coming in 2016. Oh, I, didn't, I, I thought for some reason it was going to come out in 2017, but no, I'm really... Uh, there, uh, so it's probably going to come out in October time, I'm assuming? Uh, actually, it's coming out June 9th, so sooner than you thought. They already started filming, actually. There's, like, some set footage of Tom Cruise. Oh, seriously? Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. And Universal's behind, it, behind this, and they're, like, trying to get the whole... Uh, cinematic Universe cinematic going. Cinematic Universe, okay. Yeah. So, and, oh, and if they're really getting Tom Cruise in this... He's been uh, having a hot streak, the Mission Impossible series. Oh, recently. yeah. That last his one career, was his he's biggest one box high, office. Yeah, I was going to say, he's one of the more high, highest paid actors uh, thus far in Hollywood. So, and, it brings some great credibility to the film. And, like, I'm really excited because it's, like you were saying, the start of that cinematic universe. It's the first non-superhero one we're getting. And I, I've seen uh, the Mummy series with Brandon Fraser and stuff. And to me, I... I I have not seen the third one though, because I thought that looked weird. The <laughs> yeah, the Chinese. China. Yeah, I thought they were just bullshitting, and I think everyone agreed with me if I remember the reviews. But anyway, like, uh, what I really liked about the original Mummy series was the creepiness behind it. Like, I was generally scared of mummies. Like, everyone always like shows werewolf vampires like it's like their yeah. favorite thing the mummy series was the one that fucking scared the shit out of me and i respected the mummy but the, people always bullshit with but the, the mummy. thing about that mummy was more like action adventure kind of it was so good it was like a mixture of like indiana jones like but no it, not even quite like brandon fraser himself like stands out on his own you know at, at uh I forgot the main character's name. And uh, the, isn't that the one with the rock? Wait, no, that's Scorpion King. Well, dude. he does show up in the Scorpion King in the second, uh, in the second <laughs> one, which is it's okay. It's pretty, it's decent for yeah. a sequel. But the first one's so great. Oh my god, it catches the creepiness, the funny, and the uh, and the awesome action. It's but just, dude, oh. I'm pretty sure this was gonna have more of the vibes of like the original like '60s. Like, yeah, and mommy. Tom Cruise. Yeah, he's been in so much like uh, action shit recently. I think he yeah, it's a get, change of pace, like more of a horror. And yeah, I think he can easily get into the vibe as uh, uh, Brandon Fraser did back uh, in the early 2000s or yeah. late 90s or and, whatever. It came and I out. think since like he's getting a little older, maybe he does need to spread his wings, get more like serious. And especially in like sort of like horror type, uh, if it is going to lead more horror, I hope they only like, make it like so. too ridiculous. If you know what I mean. Yeah, because like this is all building up. Like it's going to be one movie where all the monsters face off: Mummy, Wolfman, Swamp Thing, like Very Dracula. Cool. Very cool. So I wonder how that battle's gonna play out. Swamp Man. I, okay, I, I I don't know anything about Swamp Man or whatever, so I guess that I'm would be. I'm not sure really... if it's Swamp Man. It's like, is it the Blob? It's like, something like that. Oh, the Blob, or like the creature that lurks from Black the Lagoon or, or, or something. Oh yeah, from the Black Lagoon. I think, I think that's the one actually, not the Swamp Thing. Yeah, Black Lagoon. Oh my God, I mean that that would be cool. Just to have an awesome origin story. I think they can really go dark with that. Yeah, we've never seen that since like the or like the old ass <laughs> ages. Plus, like, who doesn't want to see like Frankenstein take on Wolfman and stuff? I think it could be cool. I know that. Oh, that would be very interesting. It could be like what They're Freddy both versus really Jason could have been. If it is like a werewolf, like when I think of werewolf, I always hope it's like in Skyrim, like it's like similar to the underworld. Like werewolves are like kind of big, hulking. Like they like they look more like the beast from Beauty and the Beast, so to speak. They yeah. don't look. Like, I hate, what, like, the American teen wolf shit. Oh, like, yes. I, I'm not that a big fan of That was more of a comedy, that. though, wasn't I, it? Yeah, but, like, I just, uh, some people, like, uh, had that sort of look, like, the Beast in, uh, Ec in oh, Days of Future Past. Yeah, he looks absolute horse shit. No, yeah, he was, like, a tiny little scrawny guy. I think that's, like, when you can go a little bit wrong with that, I guess. But Yeah, like, Wolfman better be huge and, like, menacing. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, that's the one thing, like, werewolves have is, like, their claws, their teeth, and they're very, like, a lot physically, I've always thought, at, like, stronger, per se, yeah. than the vampires. Just vampires can uh, think outthink them, and yeah, they're really, and then they're really durable. And another thing, take note about this Mummy remake, it's gonna be directed by Alex Kurtzman. Who's like never really directed much? Oh yeah, but he's, he's done a lot produced. of producing. Yeah. Like, but he produced Amazing Spider-Man, which was trash, and then uh, 
They did the two Star Trek, first two Star Trek re And eight. the first Transformers, if I recall. Oh, yeah, and the very first Transformers movie, which... Which I like, actually... The, the I'm not a big fan, personally, I, though. I hate the Transformer series that they had made in of itself, but the, but the first, first one, one, I will back that up. It was a great movie. It, 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 was, it, wasn't, it was like, had like a good era where there wasn't really that much awesome CGI action yeah, action. Yeah, what was it, like 2005 or Yeah, something? I bet it shows its age probably now, but I don't know. I, 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 I'll, I, I'll give it it's the best of the series, at least. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's someone who hates the Transformers series now. They just need to go back. <laughs> back to the roof. Yeah, or uh, something. Uh, just go to back Cybertron. To just board. go to Cybertron. That'll be interesting. No one's ever seen, like, Cybertron. Maybe they can do political shit. Like, before, like, there was a war that breaks out. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that would be cool. We not. I mean, I, I, what if they get into political shit and, and the then mummy they, they reboot? They talk about how the Unicron maybe gets formed or something like that. But now, nah, dude, and mummy reboot, it's not even gonna be violence. They're gonna be fighting off in court. Oh my like, god! Wolfman taking on mummy oh in my case god. of violence. They, they both become their own lawyers too. <laughs> Yeah, Wolfman uh, will be lawyer for Frankenstein. Oh god, no, that'd be so fucking. <laughs> yeah, seems like something from like a weird Scooby Doo. And like you just have like mummy or like dead people or like zombies and shit like in the background or whatever. Just in the like, audience. Uh, yeah, judges and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, we'll keep you guys up to date with this mummy remake. I'm pretty sure we should get a trailer soon if it's hitting this yeah, summer. Yeah, I was gonna say like probably within spring is my guess. Yeah, so. We'll keep you guys updated as that develops. But that's pretty much like, uh, in terms of horror, like that's pretty much like the only like horror related news, I guess if you want to call it. Yeah. That, but the rest. Hopefully of, it's scary. I'm hoping. Fingers uh, crossed. I actually, uh, and especially because like horror needs a jump start. I think because lately horror's been trash, especially this past know, year. And especially if you go back to its original roots, maybe you can find a few psychological or like just different ways and how to you know scare the audience and think like of the old horror yeah, people old in instead of like not old school and more devious and horrifying without it being too f bloody I guess I, I just <laughs> I mean do what you want maybe for the wool, wool I mean uh, the werewolf shit yeah you could well I, if anything I think uh, comedy in the last few years they, it's at, it's had a really good streak I those agree. Stories, but but the, lately it's only been like really good streak with, like with sequels like horrible bosses 2 i thought it was a good sequel uh 22 jump street pretty good. i thought that, that was pretty good uh neighbors i hated but uh <laughs> there wasn't really like any sort of like a new original type uh comedy that to me uh, has really stood out but with the new uh the disaster movie that's coming out the uh, disaster artist yeah with james franco and uh uh i forget who else is involved uh Shit. his brother baby oh franco. yeah oh yeah yeah i forgot his brother he always has to introduce him but like now they have uh brian cranston apparently that yeah that's brian cranston cranston. just joined uh, that's the that's the newest info that we have just released from the the disaster hunters, but yeah, and that's coming out sometime this year. And basically, for you that have not seen the room, oh my you don't understand gosh, why the infamous room. How have you not heard of it? If you like anything like in, in relate like cinema like related shit, yeah. oh my god! If you've seen it, you understand why we're pumped for this. Basically, it's about James Franco and them about the making of the room. Like They're basing it like a lot from the book that arrived from uh, uh, the co-star. Yeah, yeah, uh, from uh, Mark from the the Mark, Mark the actor. Yeah, he made a book. And then basically, they're kind of like make, making a movie based off all the references from the book and whatnot. And it's good. If it, I'm it, sure they're gonna add their own comedy to it too. And like, and, and from uh, I I remember seeing behind the scenes shit. Like, cause I had to do research on John uh, on uh, Johnny Wiseau or or uh, or, uh, or Tommy Wiseau or Tommy Wiseau if you want uh, <laughs> be technical, but he doesn't deserve it. And it, judging from his background, it would be very interesting how James Franco and shit can make it in terms of, I don't know if they're going to go really serious with it, or they're going to make it go pretty funny. Because it's pretty out there, too. It's just like a weird chemistry relationship. Like, I I think, like, literally the way Mark describes it is that he was so fascinated like, like him. Like, I think we all were, because we thought he's just, like, an alien yeah. or something. Like, I wonder if they will get to him being an alien or something. <laughs> just the things he, and he like, comes up with, like, no human would ever say. I'm excited to see, like, Tommy Wiseau 
being played by James Franco. I want to see James Franco if he can like oh pull it off. Oh my god, with the just long the awkwardness. Hair. Oh my god. And, and Dave Franco's he playing Mark. Mar yeah, that's actually a good. Okay, that's when I hate Dave Franco. I mean, I, I, I just. He's okay sometimes. He's he got famous because of his brother. I feel like so many actors like like Ray and like John Boyega, they would have a harder time yeah. than no anyone. But no, uh, that's just a good example. Like, uh, but I think that would actually be a really good role because uh, Dave Franco. The one thing is I hate about him, he just looks so much like a pretty boy with just bushy eyebrows. <laughs> that's the only thing that's imperfect about him. Probably everything else, he's just like blah god form. Oh, and like. Adding and Brian like, Cranston and to the movie. And that's exactly what Mark is supposed to be. Like, the seductor that like, oh, yeah. gets uh, he his fiance. I wonder who's playing that woman. Oh my gosh, she would have to be the biggest bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she would have to be a really huge bitch. Oh my god. The only thing that comes to mind is Sarah Silverman from, uh, uh, just from, uh, School of Rock or whatever, because oh, yeah. she was that'd, just playing as such a bitchy girl. That'd be hilarious. But she's a cool person in, re in real life, like, from what I've seen, she seems like she'd be so chill. And she's a super born pretty <laughs> sane, dude, so shout back, bitch. Oh, shout back. But, like, adding Brian Cranston's, I predict he's gonna play, like, a behind the scenes type person, maybe, like, a director. That or, would be interesting, yeah. Well, Tom Harris out of directed, maybe, like, a producer or something. That would be really cool. Like, or just cameraman. Like, yeah, just see uh, someone's perspective. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell is this scene or something? Oh Dude, my god. I gosh, think this movie's gonna be hilarious, I hope. Especially for you that actually love the room as a co I'm comedy. the one that showed it to all you motherfuckers. So. And I love it, although too many sexy. Did you know the sexy have to be the same? <laughs> The same angle. <laughs> yeah, they have to get like Tommy Wiseau's point of view. When, yes, get this when, angle. When he's humping the belly button. Yeah, the, oh, the belly button. Oh the humans God. love that. <laughs> and then like unnecessary ass scenes of waking up. Look at this. Although we don't know the release date, I'm hoping this movie does not get postponed or anything like that. Unlike some movies, Star uh, Wars Episode uh, Eight. Uh, we're pointing the fingers at you because that's a, that is our next topic. Yeah, exactly. They were trying to make the traditional May release date, but unfortunately, that is not the case. That would have been awesome as fuck. But for from judging from their reasonings, from what we have gathered, they really uh, the original idea was to have these two new women cast as uh, some characters. Yeah, they're supposed to be like lead roles. Yeah, or like really prominent side characters, and then they they had to down, downsize them as just being like uh, very minor characters. Like I guess because yeah, exactly. they really want to focus on the the core main characters. Yeah, Finn, right now. Poe, and Ray. And I think they do. I think it's absolutely necessary. You definitely can't introduce new people. I mean, like Lando was introduced in Episode Five, but he wasn't like there for too long. Yeah. But he had a decent amount of time. And I hope with this rewrite, they also add more of Kylo Ren, cough cough. Yeah, I was gonna say you really have to uh, not to be like hating on you know like not on like two new people that want yeah. to get like shown or anything unknowns or whatever, but. We need to we, learn about these new characters. I was gonna say, especially like how people are divided on Ray being like the Betty Sue, or the Betty Sue or whatever, uh, or Mary Sue. That was it, like <laughs> that. Like you know, she can just do anything and shit like that. And yeah. people hating Kylo Ren. Even they think he's, a, he's annoying. I think they really these need to focus gripes are on nitpicks in my opinion. And, and, if they do focus on more on, on Rey and Kylo Ren's uh, training, training uh, they can get more Jedi uh, or uh, Master Luke Skywalker. It's time for him to have his own quotes yeah, and shit exactly. like that about he the He needs Force. to be the wise master now, and exactly. I want to see that. And that'd be so cool. And, uh, and we plus, move, like, oh, I just, I just, oh, I'm giggling like in my, <laughs> like in my belly right now, just thinking about the possibilities. <laughs> and the new John Williams score, maybe we'll get. Ho like, hopefully, it's a little bit better. Yeah, it was really that was the only underwhelming part, but. That it had a few new scores that were pretty cool, and then when they did show the old scores, they did at the right time, like when Ray pulls the lightsaber, like know, from dude. Kylo Ren, and just had that all uh, Luke's theme playing in the background. It was so sick. And plus, as we predict, I think we we both think what the movie's going to be about. The perspectives of training under light and dark. We're going to see a bunch of new stuff we've never yeah, even yeah, seen. Yeah, uh, we'll get quotes with the force. We'll get quotes from a fucking Sith Lord, possibly uh, Plagueis, training 
a, a Padawan level to grant you. Kylo Ren is not like super OP. Like he's not meant to be. He's like a Padawan. Even for Padawan, it's pretty impressive him stopping exactly. the bullet and mind controlling people. I was gonna say people. I don't know any Padawans that can do that shit. Yes, I, and he and he says he might become so powerful, and I think he will by episode nine. And dude. in the books, they say that uh, Snoke had apprentices before, and uh, but Kylo Ren's is his his most uh, prominent by far, like bar none. Yeah, especially he has the most potential. If he does turn out to be a fucking Plagueis, that would mean he's more powerful than Palpatine. What? I, Hashtag what? Oh, uh, I, I actually, I actually would. I would Bet be happy. I, I mean, Palpatine Kai is rated to be really OP, especially from like the books and stuff, like what they... It is Solo and Leia's son, so powerful bloodline. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think he can really discard him really easily. I think Kyle Ren, he has to learn all he can. If he does get Force Lightning or something new... He definitely should be able to. I think he definitely will learn. I bet it'll be... a. Uh, a different color. I wouldn't be surprised. Like purple or... Because I don't think like the... Yellow maybe? I think from what I've gathered from this, from what the Legends Now universe, the Expand universe used to be, like the, the color didn't matter. Like it was honestly just the people behind it, but I think Palpatine was just like the best, like one of the best by Yeah, part. exactly. That's why he got the purplish. Yeah. And, and, but in like... In the expanding years, people had like kind of different ones, like uh, red, white, Damn. black. I think. Oh, oh, what if he did have black? I was gonna crazy say looking. the the woman who plays uh, uh, the rival sibling for uh, whoever the old. Uh... God damn it! I keep forgetting. Basically, one of the siblings for Leia is Han Solo. Basically, uh, she was a Jedi and she shot lightning out of her hands when she was like. Mourning over. What if like, they do get into death, Ray looking into the dark is, side? What? What if they do get into Ray looking into the dark side? That I mean, it'd be really interesting. They both get tempted by opposite sides. Like, what if uh, Kylo Ren still has a pull to the light side? He probably will. Some and Ray may have wants to learn a lot. Or, <laughs> you know, you I, never know. Yeah, that's why I love about this new trilogy. But we don't I honestly know what's rather happen. just have core straight dark side, light side. But hopefully Kylo Ren can be redeemed in the end. Or he might be killed. We'll have to wait and see. Ray could be killed too. We'll never know, dude. I'm so pumped. I bet, trilogy. and I bet when they duel again, I wouldn't be surprised if Kylo Ren, Ren wins this one, and then the next, and somehow she'll escape or be captured. Or what then, if he Kylo Ren it, takes down Luke this time? Or he takes down Luke. I wouldn't be surprised about that too. It, so awesome. That'll make it personal for Ray to to like be tempted, like to you know revenge him in a way. Yeah, and then maybe touch on the dark. Maybe they'll get into Sith Holocron, similar to Rebels. We'll get on that later, though. I honestly think that they, they might, uh, I hope, based on, like, how she carries the staff around, I wonder if she's gonna have a double bladed lightsaber. Oh, that'd be sick. Just, I hope so. I'm just, uh, throwing out these random characteristics, maybe. Or maybe a Force Pike. <laughs> oh, I want her to construct her lightsaber. That's when she's a Jedi. She doesn't just loan a lightsaber. And Kylo Ren, because his lightsaber gets sliced, might construct a new one, or maybe repair it? Yeah, he could. Maybe he found that one, and it was just, like, a chip crystal or whatever, but, uh... And he didn't really construct it. And, uh... And Rebels he... has a hint. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he did. But we'll get back to Rebels. But we can go and yeah. talk about Star Wars all day. Like, we're, we're just keep on rambling. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, and we have more Star Wars news coming later, okay. so stay tuned for that. Moving on, we have some news about the Jumanji reboot. Not only has it been postponed, but we have a new director for you guys. Jumanji has been postponed to the new release date of July 28th, 2017, and okay. has landed the director of Jake Kasdan, who's been known for comedies Dewey Cox Story, uh, Sex Tape, and Bad Teacher. Uh, Not yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, uh, One, I don't know anyone that likes Bad Teacher, me personally. <laughs> That's just my opinion. I saw it, didn't care for it. I didn't. I saw a Sex Tape, didn't care for it. I saw parts of Sex Dewey Tape, Cox did not care okay for it. Dewey okay at parts. Kind of long though. Oh, seriously, that's the only way, I, thing I have not. And seen. Maybe it's just because I love John C. Riley. <laughs> but anyways, I'm not really excited for this reboot because one, you, now you have to top Robin Williams, which is very hard. Yeah, I mean, and two, although like the original, the CGI is not the best. 
I don't think it needs to be remade unless if they do something like completely different with it, like new, brand new stuff happens, I'd be down. Like, okay, yeah, like uh, they, I bet they, they honestly could because that uh, they haven't even gone through probably even half the cards in the last year. Yeah, I exactly. It has to be new cards. And okay, that's one CGI would would definitely be de yeah, well, new especially CGI. In space. I, mean, I can just see space happening for some reason. Uh, you're thinking it's the Thera man. Remember oh that? god, <laughs> uh, I don't want to remember. <laughs> and hopefully this I doesn't remember go the route Zena, of the The girl of the 21st century, and that was already bad. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I don't know how you guys feel about this Jumanji reboot. I'm very curious. Comment below. I, I'm indifferent. Uh, I, the trailer teaser. has to, yeah, the trailer has to wow me. And like, I don't even know. Like you can learn a lot uh, probably a, from a teaser. I bet from them, and uh, they hopefully have, they don't ex spoil too much about uh, what goes on in the movie. Unlike this next movie that we're going to talk about, which is uh, Ten Cloverfield uh, oh, Lane. Oh, Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, which J.J. Abrams is saying is like a step brother to Cloverfield. Like a step brother yeah, to he's Cloverfield. Saying, he's saying it's not like a true sequel, but it's like. I don't know, it's like weird. I don't know exactly what to make of the movie. Just a coincidental and, name. Uh, and here's the thing, like, first this movie started off not being a Cloverfield movie at all. Then they saw it, read the script, and like, instead of like a nuclear holocaust outside, how about we do whatever happened in Cloverfield outside? Oh, okay. What I don't even know what happened. I mean, I know a lot of aliens were attacking, but... Yeah, and it could be... I don't know what to make of this movie. That's why I'm very curious to see it. And like, I like how it's different from Cloverfield. Just no like, shaky cam. No yeah. shaky cam. That's why I didn't want to watch Cloverfield. Thank God there's no like shaky cam. Although Chronicle got it right, most films do, do not. <laughs> and I've never actually seen like Cloverfield, like the whole thing. So I'm not sure. I know J.J. Abrams did it. it. Like you know, when the people are in the subway and they're getting chased by these like. <laughs> We, uh, these, I don't know, these like spider crab like things. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, but they're but saying it might be game. robots this time or something. That'll be more, more random. Why not? And there's a theory that Cloverfield might go the route like uh, Twilight might... Zone, have like a new weird story every time. That's the theory that going around. That sounds like where I can see Cabin in the Woods 2 going because they, oh, they also be have like. Cabin in the Woods 2 would probably be better than at this. The, at the end of Cabin in the Woods, like there's so many possibilities that are roaming out. Like in Yeah, the, don't spoil it because if you have not seen Cabin in the Woods, get on it. Oh my god. It's definitely like an un, like an underdog or like a, a diamond in the rough, or like, but it's a diamond nonetheless. Yeah, it's, and, but one thing that's surprising is coming out so soon, March 11th just two months away it's surprising how jj abrams has been able to keep it secret not really yeah i was gonna say star wars was the ultimate it, smoke screen it's like so hard to find like not find information about a movie like until yeah, like, stuff like leaking months. online yeah, yeah i was gonna say so it's actually kind of surprising that we find this out like two months prior before it's released it's yeah. kind of makes it slightly more energetic, I guess, for yeah. some reason. Like, I should get it's more, like learn more about this because it's about to come out soon. So. And they really got to rely a lot on the writing for this one. Like, the dialogue in the since it takes place in this cabin, probably the whole movie, it's got to be great but dialogue. The, in the, throughout the whole trailer, though, I was so pissed off. I think they showed a little bit too much. They yeah. could have construct that whole trailer Without to make it that. look like the, it was just a happy family, and then you you suddenly get hints that there's something like that they're like in a bunker, like they did it. Like that was fine. Yeah. But like, and then but showing you, like one of them might betray the other. Yeah, or sh sh it honestly looked like the woman and guy. They, I bet they're all not related, or and the woman and guy are just together, and like the guy's like badly hurt, and they had to take shelter in there or something. And it's just a crazy guy, <laughs> oh my and he's God. holding them hostage. Yeah. Uh, so, so and then probably it, it spoils major spoilers. A lot of, yeah, and, and I bet they're honestly in the bunker most of the time, and it shows. At the end of the trailer, that she's walking out of the bunker, she's gasping yeah. at what she sees. But I bet that's, that's like, the only part I'm fascinated about. What does she see? Is it going to be the robots? I bet you only see shit. And it's more like a build of like, oh, you're just gonna have to find out or something. Yeah. It's more just speculation. We're definitely gonna give this movie a chance and review it for you guys. So just wait for our review before you guys see this one. This one's an iffy looking movie. Yeah. The other one, uh, uh. Hail Caesar that's coming out. If you ever our seen next the trailer, trailer of the week, yeah, it, 
that's also sort of an iffy movie for me too, because it has all these awesome like characters and whatnot. But the trailer itself awesome didn't cast. do anything. It didn't do anything to reel me in in a way. It wasn't like a really funny trailer or anything. I they, thought it was like kind of funny, just like the way that they kept repeating that one line over and over yeah, and throughout. It, but like, I can see the movie being boring, honestly. I can see it going either way. One has a great cast. The director is pretty cool. Uh, the Coen Brothers. And they have, like, Joan Heron, Jane, Jane Tatum, Scarlett Johansson, and, uh, like, three other people. I, I'm trying to, I just can't remember off the top of my head. George Clooney. Oh, yeah, and George, oh, yeah, George Clooney, my God. Yeah, he's one of the big ones. Basically, it's about the, the making of the Hail Oscar Caesar. winner, Hail Caesar. And it's, like, the behind the scenes, it shows the director getting in with the... Which is, uh, actually... Actors. It could be a little fascinating to watch from like a director's point of view. I was gonna say, uh, I, have you ever seen the movie Alfred Hitchcock uh, with the Hannibal Lecter guy and whatnot? Uh, yeah. That's actually a really good movie. It's behind the scenes of uh, how they had to get like the whole Psycho movie. What with the low budget? Yeah, yeah, with like a low budget and uh, uh, how they had to get like the uh, creepiness. Yeah, because like that would have been taken. They wouldn't even put it in theaters mostly because they thought it was too violent at the time. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah, even though was, they don't show the violence. I was gonna say like we like you think like Australia is fucked up with their co like <laughs> with their maturity rating and shit like that. Like no, we were we were just as fucked up. I know. And Hail Caesar is not too far away. Like literally a week from now, February fifth. I think we're gonna double feature that with Star Wars probably, or yeah. maybe. Maybe the forest. That actually be pretty, pretty chill. Yeah, I mean the forest. I heard it's not the best, but it, the trailers looked interesting. Remember the suicide forest? Oh yeah, I forgot. I, I had to think for a second. I was like the forest. No, because I knew uh, I was thinking of a creepy forest, but I couldn't remember the premise behind yeah, it. But yeah. now I remember. So maybe we'll double feature with that. I'm definitely yeah, because the forest does intrigue me a little bit. Yeah. Especially I like to see as much as horror. Asian cu culture as much as possible, even if it's horror, and I love horror. Yeah, I'd be. I'm. That sounds like a double feature to me next week. I don't know. Maybe triple feature throwing Star Wars. We've got uh, the Suicide Squad trailer. Oh, the uh, everyone's pretty much been raving about that. I think on uh, Facebook. Recently. Oh yeah, and for good reason. Unlike the Batman vs Superman trailer, it didn't show the ending to the movie. It didn't show every plot oh, point. But uh, but we we did see uh, what would possibly be the origin story for, for the, the Joker. Joker. And uh, Harley Quinn, and you know how they're you know crazy and whatnot. And I didn't notice that at first, but that they fall in the acid. I didn't know that was acid. It looked like paint. <laughs> yeah, but then it shows. I don't know, but I thought it was literally like a lot of makeup coming off, and it was making that weird color. No, I mean it makes sense for that to be the origin, I guess. But in the comics, they never really got into the origin. So what if it's just like a story Joker's telling it's not like true or something? Yeah, That'd that's cool. so true. How he uh, fucks up uh, uh, Harley Quinn and whatnot. Like, she, yeah. oh, that would be insane. So that's a possibility. It might not be a spoiler. Another thing, they didn't really reveal what their mission is still. It just reveals that they're criminals getting together. Let's know a little bit about the criminals. But me and Roger agreed on something. Katana was... Not used much in the trailer. Is she just silent throughout the whole film or whatnot? Like, she's the one that, she's one of the ones that intrigues me the most. Exactly. I want to get her backstory. I hope that that's a good yeah, 15 yeah, no, minutes. No. I hope they don't just read it from a clipboard as yeah. they're walking by to this prisoner. This prisoner, um, she sliced <laughs> out, like, these people and, like, and sp several black and, ops and whatnot. That's insert it. Insert funny pun here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> insert, like, probably Asian humor, like, <laughs> racist shit. And then, like, they're gonna probably walk away. And that's it. And then she's pretty much not gonna say anything. Because yeah. the clipboard does everything. Overall, this trailer is kicked ass. The action, the action looked amazing. The music, I thought, was the perfect. The music was perfect. I, th I think it fit the group pretty well. I'm actually loving what I'm seeing from Jared Leto's Joker. And uh, Har they just keep showing a lot of Harley Quinn. She's like the main character, I I'm assuming, at this I point. I want to be like, surprised, Will honestly. Smith. I thought Will Smith would be easily. That shot, uh, eh. Which I'm actually fine with. Harley's more prop popular. But I wonder how much Joker we're going to get. We were talking about earlier, is that all... All those scenes, the most I predict of that's the Joker in the movie. All we see from this trailer and from what we see uh, previous trailers, I think that's honestly most are probably what we're gonna get from the Joker. Joker, I wouldn't be surprised, at least story wise, because that means they could expand that a lot more, like for it to make sense and whatnot. But uh, for, for the trailers to match up, but exactly. uh, it honestly seems like it, it, it's get, it's a build up to like the origin story to Joker yeah, and Harley. It's probably Cruz. gonna 
focus on probably, theirs the most and then gloss over everyone else's yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because, like, yeah, they could talk about the Joker, like, where's his whereabouts or something, and she's like, I don't know, conflicted, I don't know. And I like how, like, Jared Leto's being more of the gangster Joker, trying his own thing rather than trying to copy Oh, yeah, copy the Tony Heath Montana Ledger. of the Joker. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what, that's fine, because you don't want to copy off. I mean, Heath Ledger had... The, the perfect Joker. I don't, I it, it, to me, like one of the perfect Jokers, but uh, you can't copy that performance per se. But he does do it similarly. He yeah, does have his own gang. He's still he like ins own, he's definitely still insane. And he has like his quality. own like little mafia group or or like thugs that he finds off the street per se. But uh, he he's just more like from the streets per se. It, yeah. It's just the weirdest thing. And we were wondering, are they finding like aliens in this trailer? What? What are exactly are they yeah, fighting? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, like, uh, we were wondering who, because we thought, like, the Joker was gonna be, like, one of the main people that they were gonna be part of the movie. We were like, oh, he could be the villain for all yeah. we know. And then, uh,. And they may seem like like there's like some sort of alien force that's like uh, being involved. And, and I whatnot. hope it's not like aliens. And I'm just like, why not the Justice League? I don't understand. Like, uh, yeah, save aliens for the Justice League. Uh, I don't. And why like, not bring Batman? We involved, have a theory. In maybe like everyone's on the Joker gas and they're like tripping balls. Maybe. And that could be a good theory. Oh, that theory. could be cool. And like since they're villains, they don't care that they're civilians. They just take them out. True. That could be a possibility. Seems like it's going to be a pretty uh, funny, awesome flick, but uh, I don't know how, how I can say this next uh, <laughs> trailer, how it's any sort of funny, because it is a it's sequel a to a, a comedy we never asked for, <laughs> yeah. and it's Neighbors 2, and Neighbors starring, were... guest starring Zac Efron, in case you guys were yeah, anticipating the first one. For, for him to return. <laughs> But the thing that gets me excited, and I think everyone gets excited over, is Chloe Moretz being in this movie. I think she's like the selling point. No, that's point fine. For a lot no, no, people. that's fine. I don't mind Chloe Moretz. No, the first half of the trailer was fine. I thought it was gonna be. Zac Efron, okay. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be like Seth uh, Rogen and his wife are gonna help. You know, her, ironically, help out. You know, her uh, frat that she's trying to form, like this party frat. But uh, no, it, it just it. The trailer, I think, showed a little bit too much also. I think it showed a lot of the basic yeah, plot points. And, and uh, they, a lot of jokes. Yeah, I mean, and even the jokes that they do show uh, are pretty shit. And they showed <laughs> off one joke that didn't make me laugh in the first one, when it was the airbag <laughs> joke, because you know why? They showed it in the trailer. <laughs> now they showed it in the trailer again. Now they showed it in the trailer again. <laughs> and we've seen this trailer. Oh, God, it's just stupid. I don't, know. I, I don't have any. I hopes. predict this movie is gonna be okay, just like the first one. Uh, that's my predictions. I think it's gonna be like a mids rating. Yeah, I honestly, that's probably what I'm gonna give it. At least it's not garbage like Dumb and Dumber Two. No, the worst ex comedy experience I've had in a long or time. Or that, or that the the new uh, uh, Griswold field trip. Oh, vacation. Vacation. I yeah. still think Dumb and Dumber Two is worse than that, dude. It's that bad. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That, that. <laughs> just, I'm just, uh, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know, man. You said uh, Sanjaro, or, whatever, or what was that one with uh, Sicario? Sicario, yeah. You thought that was a bad movie, and I thought it was pretty good. So, well, that's uh, action. That, that's different. This is I don't know. Uh, yeah, all right, we'll watch Dumb and Dumber <laughs> Two. We'll see how you feel about the movie. <laughs> I'll be in submission. <laughs> Just go. You'll submit the first five minutes, I assure you. Oh my god. Uh, Steven but... literally passed out, and that's the one time I didn't blame. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one time I envied him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why can't I sleep through this garbage? I can't take much more. Well, luckily, uh, when it comes to sequels, this the second half of uh, the new Rebels looks... Oh, yeah, the mid-season trailer just dropped. And, it, and it, it looks absolutely awesome. It showed off, like, the first half of the second season of Rebels that I've shown thus far... Star Wars Rebels that I've shown thus far. Overall, it's just okay. Uh, it's okay, it's fine, but... This looks like it's taking it to a new level. A, a darker form, per se, as in... Also, Ezra hinted towards yeah. like, going to the dark side. And, like, dark. I like how in the first half they got some character development and whatnot, but I kind of kind of would have preferred them start off at this point for season two. Like, 
my favorite episode was still that sandstorm episode at the very beginning. Oh yeah, of the season. with the clone troopers, how they uh, fended off the ATATs. Like yeah, I kind of felt like the first half of this this season was kind of filler. And I feel like this is the real meat of Star Wars Rebels. I hear, I hear you, and I actually believe you because it's more of a they're showing off, especially how Ezra goes to the dark side or get tended towards to go to the dark side they're exactly. him, him Kaden, and ahsoka go to our dark jedi temple where the, it's at we don't know it could be corbin yeah. it could be jamal and Thomas. i wonder if this temple will show up again in episode eight uh, or something regardless of how, where it's at uh apparently ezra will confront this old quote-unquote old master who looks an awful like an old character. Yeah, apparently everyone's basically confirming based on like upping the con the brightness like on a TV or like in the video or something. You can see uh, the outline of Darth Maul's face and one of the tattoos and shit And I'm like actually that. down for that. You know what? I was kind of hating it at first. I was like, okay, what's this shit? But I'm like, Darth Maul has not gotten any justice in Clone Wars because like... They, they brought him it. back with his weird robot crab leg. Yeah, and he doesn't like fight like the same like since Clone Wars. Like, like his his method is just uh, if you yeah. if you're a huge Star Wars nerd like me and and focus on like the fighting styles and shit like that, just doesn't these people <laughs> weren't paying attention. And now they have a chance to redeem him. And think about the future of movies. It could lead into an Obi-Wan movie. Maybe. Him fighting chance. off Darth Maul. Because in, in the old comic books, they did fight. Uh, uh, sometime after he exiles himself, so it, very possible there. Much more unlikely. What if he shows up in Rogue One? That's oh possible. my god! Like oh okay, maybe uh, if he helps the rebels or because he has no, he does not want to help Sidious. Sidious killed his brother. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like they hit his face not only to hide Darth Maul, but I feel like they were trying to make it seem like it was snow. And honestly, trailer. it fooled me because I yeah, was I like, "Yeah, I thought it was him at first too." Because Ezra in the trailer, she he also finds a, a cross, uh, a, yeah. a, a lightsaber of a cross guard, green uh, crystal. Could, could that be Kylo Ren's? Maybe, maybe not. It could be a mislead again. No, it can't be. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it can be. I don't know. He could start the Knights of Ren. People thought. What if? Then that's all. Oh, that'd be insane if that's how the Knights of Ren gets started with by Ezra. And like that's just a new generation by uh, uh, the end of uh, when uh, Kyle Ren gets in there. Benicio del Toro is cast for a and, villain, and uh, he would his character would fit a similar age to what uh, Ezra would be if he uh, survived that long. Apparently, he would be like late forties, early fifties. And Serious, that's to, interesting, actually. Apparently, I thought he'd be like sixty years old or some shit like that. I I I'd actually be down for Ezra to show up. People wonder that, but I also I I, I, I doubt I, it. Though. I doubt it. I doubt I, it. But I wonder what room for villains there are right now in episode 8. Like, who would he play? Like, a bounty hunter? I know Benicio Del Toro is going to be a main villain, I think. I think while Kylo Ren's doing training, Benicio Del Toro and probably General well, Husk are yeah, going to be like... Husk and I want to see more of the Chrome Trooper, unless that was truly oh, yeah. the end of her. Oh, no, 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 no. They definitely have her in, uh, in episode 8. That is confirmed. Thank God. In the books, they explain how she gets out, is I it guess. Dumb? Uh... But it, it's just, it, it, it's not explained too much. It's kind of weird. Oh, damn. That's Her armor, they say, is very indestructible. What if it crushed her and it didn't kill you her? You know, that's exactly what people thought. Like, like they didn't really explain exactly how she got out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> assuming she just called on the intercoms or something and be like, I'm in Big the trash. Bitches, get me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're like, shit, it's Captain Phasma. I know. And if she's guys... probably a badass and we don't know it. And as you guys may know, we have an after show for Star Wars Rebels. Check that shit out oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Okay, always on the weekly basis whenever it starts going. It's actually well, starting the, uh, this Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Surpri I thought it was going to be like next week or so, but I'm very I'm very pleased it's coming out sooner than me, I expected. Me too. And the trailer showed Yoda and Leia. Oh, well, yeah. And Leia up. as well. And that's actually good too because... 
kind of weird. They're almost like the same. They're almost close, like to the same age. So it's almost like Ezra's almost the same age as Luke. But I'm just going on a tangent. That is actually probably one of the best parts about Rebels. I think Leia could get really have a lot more fame or a lot more. Uh, she is a princess after she's, all. She's to me, she's better, way better than Padme. She's already yeah, relatable yeah, yeah. just based on the movies. But I, I just want to see her more engage with the Rebels behind series. the scenes because she's like a behind the scenes princess that's you know giving out orders to Rebel like as a commander yeah whatnot. so that's pretty interesting i just want to see the political dynamic and the military and i want to see how yoda gets involved as he just sense ezra in the force or yeah something. that was the one thing that kind of bugged me too uh yoda met ezra i mean it kind of makes sense because he get, did communicate with him when they were on the jedi temple so, so I now guess... he it kind of shows in the trailer he talks to yoda for light side then gets the holocron for dark side probably going to pick dark side but with the little hip hint of light and darkness there's also that hint of the gray oh, area yeah. for gray Jedi's apparently are a thing now, I guess. What if Kanan becomes a gray Jedi and he shows up well, in like episode 8 or something? What if he goes for training because there's no one else to train him and shit like that. But in the trailer, he seems like he fights them. Yeah. Off. Uh, like, if you guys don't know, gray Jedi's basically ma are people that have mastered... Uh, the non tempted they don't they're not tempted by the dark side and they don't flourish too much to the light side because they want a balance they think there should be a balance per yeah. se and that's actually one awesome thing about rebels they're getting into the gray jedi for people who don't know about them yeah i know uh, and uh people also saw in the trailer you can see like a little banner that apparently has the gray jedi uh it's the gray I'm jedi well. banner and so that'd be so cool for RPGs later on and stuff like oh gosh i'm just I'm and the gray there. jedi might show up in now episode eight or oh yeah, that'd be so cool. And Ahsoka, she has two very thin-looking, awesome-looking uh, silver, silver-type lightsabers, curved she lightsabers. She could become a great Jedi, yeah, maybe. That would kind of make sense because who else would she learn to teach from? She was a she was like a Padawan. Actually, when she a theory when he fights it, that could still be training. For all we know, that that is true. And uh, when Caden grabs the, and you also further tells you that it's uh, the Great Jedi's, because when he grabs a lightsaber, he has this blue one or a green one and, and, and a red. red. So, so that, that's actually Caden becomes the first Great Jedi. That'd be orgasmic, and it, and especially if, for the comic book series. People could just say, "Oh, they just couldn't mind just have the colors, just because why not?" But red lightsabers feel dark side abilities if you use them. Exactly, bro. So, and all the great Jedi's in the expanded universe were really badasses, like real supreme badass. Revan is one of them, and if you guys haven't played Nancy Old Republic, oh, uh, you'll understand. You need why. to get on that. Now we're gonna move on to our video game news section of the week, and uh, our first thing was we got a glimpse at the Mortal Kombat XL slash Mortal Kombat Combat Pack Two. Oh my god. Uh, Please explain the old characters that are coming back real quick before we forget yeah. about them. Yeah, well, for you guys, of course, Leatherface and uh, the Xenomorph aliens coming prominent, back. Prominent, one of the main yeah. prominent ones. And we that have Bo Ray Cho, which is the drunken fist master from Mortal Kombat Everyone, Armageddon. But. I, I, see, I'm not, I never grew up with Mortal Kombat, but I know a lot of people are going to be so excited that he's coming back. Cause I, Especially Drunken Fist, he's one of the funnier characters. He, he's, a, he's one of the coolest, uh, more dynamic. He's like he's like a, a different form of Johnny Cage, like the more <laughs> ridiculous, just normal human. And actually, I just found this out, the, the robot's called the Triborg. It's combining two classics, uh, Sector and Cyrax. You could become either one of them, or you could even become Robot Smoke. Wait, what? So he's like th three th robots three. in one. So he's a bad ass motherfucker. Exactly. He's like the Ultron of like the uni of the Mortal Kombat universe. Yeah, and they showed a gameplay trailer, which I highly recommend you watch. It That's gets cool. really into the characters' move sets and stuff. They need to have a story mode that it, involves it gives, these people. Yeah, it gives you backstory and stuff like that. Like they can easily introduce that. Like I think that should be involved in the DLC. You shouldn't have to pay more for something like that if they do have that. Exactly, and if you guys know, we're going to have a Mortal Kombat X tournament when all this DLC comes out where the where it's going to be live stream on YouTube just all of us fighting for money it's going to be pretty cool you're going to see our gameplay you're going to see us how badass we are with all the characters no limits it's going to be off the chain tournament's coming about April 
And it's only gonna be off the chain basically if I win, but <laughs> it's not gonna be awesome. Is there anything nah, I think, know about it? Just that. I think I think everyone uh, knows who's gonna win this I, battle. I, I wish we recorded uh, our Pokemon battles. And we Pokemon, should in oh the future have God. a Pokemon. Pokemon Stadium one and two. Oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. we bet so much money on it. Speaking of Nintendo, though, easily our, over a hundred, maybe two hundred, easily <laughs> each. But yeah, speaking of Nintendo, our final piece of video game news is actually a bunch of rumors involving the Nintendo NX. Oh, and there's been a, so much news that has been been sprouting out the last like week yeah. or so. Uh, one of the biggest ones being that NX might be playable on its rival consoles, Xbox and PS4, and PC and mobile, so you can play it pretty much anywhere. Which, one, smart. And two, uh, uh, how it's both gonna be a blend of mobile and a home console. They yeah. they're gonna have two separate release days. Uh, like, 2016 is gonna be the portable, and, and it's gonna probably be about 200 bucks. Yeah, it's gonna be way better than 3ds as I, well. I believe that's the rumor now, 200 bucks, and then uh, the home console is gonna come out probably early 2017, and apparently like. It can also like not only enhance like the portable does not can all also enhance the console uh, the the NX home console itself, and it can also enhance uh, I think the Wii U's processing power a little bit. Which oh is, nice, which is really cool. So it kind of gives it might it might be needed for people that want to play like uh, Zelda Wii uh, the new Zelda game because that people will be really pissed if it doesn't come out for the Wii U because that's like the first Zelda game that doesn't come out for a quote unquote console. Yeah. Even though Wii U is just like a giant fucking <laughs> Yeah, it's a waste. It's a big, uh, I, I, I but mean, NX, some games that I think they need a Pokemon game involving all regions with like an RPG thing that we thought of. They definitely have enough power to do that, most definitely. And you can join any like team, Team Rocket, whatever. B, Custom Robo, please, love of God, make a new Custom Robo from GameCube. Uh, and, and apparently, if you're wondering how, in terms of hardware, how powerful it's going to be, oh. uh, we I have heard two different like mixed opinions. Uh, I a lot, of, some is from IGN, uh, another one's from Review Tech. Review Tech says it's going to be less powerful than the PlayStation Four, but as uh, powerful as Xbox, right? Yeah, definitely as powerful. Definitely, uh, de probably better because it's probably a learn from Xbox's mistakes and somehow make it easier for third party developers somehow. Hopefully. And uh one of the biggest it, problems about Nintendo now. But we also heard it can go up to four K quality. So for if video. you have a four K T V, congrats, you have now a four K video player. Hell so yeah. and that's, that's a and big six bonus. and max out sixty frames per second. Fantastic. If anything, I care more about frames per second, especially when it comes to like big games like open worlds or like hell like FPS is now when you need bigger servers yeah. more people you and, need more frames instead of the terrible Wii U tablet controller which I didn't care for at all if they have like a like a handheld like 3DS in your hand which is comfortable on its own and it's probably that'd be like pretty a, nice too and it's probably a, a giant ass it's probably the best console handheld out there because it'll probably be super freaking powerful. Like you probably play Wii U games, straight plus, up Wii U games on there at maxed out. Plus, po probably Pokemon Z or something's gonna be on it as well. Yeah, yeah, it'll easily be adaptable or some shit like that. I'm oh, definitely gonna sell my 3DS to get this. I just need to know what it looks like, especially the portable. Probably at E3, we're gonna get a drop and a release date for this Christmas season. And I, I want to see a, a controller for the home console. I want to know if it, it, it would be good for shooters and stuff like that. I hope it's not garbage. What no. if it's the GameCube controller? At least pl th they definitely will learn from PlayStation 4 and Xbox One compare and contrast. Like, PlayStation 4 definitely changed their, their sticks. It was a huge... Yeah. I know it wasn't a complaint for you, Homer. <laughs> it was a complaint for people like me and a lot of other people that try to get into the PlayStation. Pussies. Compared to the Xbox 360, it was no match. Uh, the analogs were just fine. And oh, then they... gosh, people will say, uh, mouse and keyboard. Don't <laughs> oh, no, please, no. Well, fuck you. I can't. We have a, we're, I don't we're, like we played with keyboard. the cards we're dealt with. Yeah, I like controllers. I prefer controllers. But that's just me. And it's going to make it easier for uh, virtual reality, too. Yeah, I just hope like that leaked image of the virtual reality and weird helmet, I hope that's like just fake, not even real. I hope, honestly, Sony's just waiting for NX to unveil whatever, like, their 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 
horrible uh, device or whatever, the NX. And then, like, uh, Sony's the next week later or the next day later, they're going to unveil, like, more of the VR stuff, what yeah. it looks like, how cool is the pricing. Like, this has a chance to be what the Vita could have been. Like, Vita had remote play and stuff, which worked decent, but this could be at a much better scale, I think. Especially because be easier to run a Nintendo game, I think. Exactly, yeah. It's more You have to make it more portable and access, accessible for people to want to carry it around and stuff. Like, the 3DS is good as it is. It's Don't get me wrong, it's great. But if you have it more, like, socially acceptable, too, looking like a yeah. tablet and shit like that, but uh, then it'll make it easier. But I don't know how people are going to play certain games on it. Uh, but one thing that interests me, what if this fails... Where it's Nintendo sitting. I there. honestly hope it doesn't. I don't think it will. I, I hope think it doesn't. They're either. honestly learning from a little bit. They're definitely Nintendo always wants to do. They're like the hipsters now of like <laughs> a little. They're the first to start like the motion stuff, like like ways to interact more with gaming and stuff like that, and uh, with like motion controls and shit like that. Kind of start those gimmicks and that we. And I think they need to start working on some new and, IPs eventually. Yeah, and but. They're, and they always try to stick with their old IPs for like stubbornly for the longest time, and they think they can just survive off, and they can, but they did so poorly with the Wii, and then like unsuccess unsuccessfully the Wii U. Yeah, exactly. If they go back to the GameCube style type, they have a good chance. Yeah, in my GameCube opinion. is literally my favorite console I've ever played. Probably it's, it's definitely my top, my top three. two. Top top two. It's definitely somewhere. Around there, so and it was one of the best, better consoles of that generation. Little did I know, I was ignorant back then. I was a, I was a little dumb bitch. I always thought Nintendo was just oh, it's always a, it's just a game, it's a console for kids. But I loved all the games, yeah. regardless. That's uh, Resident Evil Four was Star a good Fox game, especially and Custom Robo, like I was saying. Oh, please bring back Custom Banjo Robo. Banjo Kazooie. Oh my god! <laughs> I never played that one either. Sonic Heroes, good memories. Oh my god! I, Sonic I, Adventure I had, One and Two. I've had more fond memories with Sonic than any other. Like, if you're talking like directed towards kids, sort of like I agree. mascot ever made compared to like Mario. Like, they, it's not, I've gotten way more Me too. fun out of Sonic than anything else. And I think Sonic needs a good revamp, unlike Sonic Boom. If anything, it's just Sonic is like a dead horse that just needs to be shot. Not dead, but in a coma for 10 years or 20 years. Not that long. Okay, fine. Not that long. <laughs> oh, you know reboot it. You know what? Maybe with virtual reality, it might you know, be maybe, spawned back. But maybe that Sonic movie sickness. coming in like 2017, 2018 will revive the series. There's a Sonic movie coming out? It's going to be half CGI, half uh, live action. What? That's cool, And it's going to be PG-13, which hopefully they get into chaos and stuff, I hope. Oh, that'd be cool as hell. I think it deserves to be PG-13. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. They don't, if they screw that up, Sonic might be dead. Because you can't make Sonic right now like being like, Oh, you stink, Eggman. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that's fine. But you can be more clever. By, it, it, it's better if you're in a PG-13 market instead of you know pg and we'll keep you up to date on all things Nintendo NX. We're going to be very close to chess on this one. But that'll do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening very much. And as always, please visit our Kickstarter at Sunderman.net. There you can learn information on our show and donate to our Kickstarter to not only give you a finished animated product to show you to fans, but to show the studios as well to look more credible. And as always, stay lifted, my friends. And you guys have a good night, and always remember, may the force be with you. Always! always. What is on, Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> That's one for the books!